So what we did was we took patients who had been who have early stage breast cancer have been treated with doxorubicin, and these patients were anywhere from essentially uh, a few months out to up to six years out, and all of them had normal ejection fraction as we normally define it, so 50 percent or more. And what we did with these patients was we feel that ejection fraction is a poor marker of what we call preclinical myocardial uh, injury. And what we decided to do was is that we would test these patients with resting echocardiograms, uh, again to assess their ejection fraction, but this time instead of by two-dimensional, by three-dimensional ejection fraction, as well as to me measure their speckle tracking strain function, uh, which in various cardiomyopathies has been shown to be a more sensitive marker of myocardial function. We also uh, evaluated these patients with cardiopulmonary exercise testing, which has, uh, in, uh, has been shown to be inversely related to you know, cardiovascular outcomes. And what we found was is that by resting function, or, or when you did the resting echocardiogram on these patients, the patients who were early, who had been most recently treated with doxorubicin, actually showed impaired myocardial function by strain, as compared to the longer-term survivors and as compared to the controls. We also found that their three-dimensional ejection fractions were also diminished as compared to both those two groups. More, uh, even more interestingly, we found that all breast cancer patients had significantly more than 20 percent decreased uh, VO2 maxes compared to healthy controls. And so we think that, that you know, when you look at strain function, when you look at cardiopulmonary exercise testing, these can be more sensitive markers of preclinical myocardial dysfunction that two-dimensional uh, ejection fraction does not detect.